Welcome to this, the ninth talk in the series, Genesis, the first three chapters. When I gave the introductory talk at the outset, I made the point that Stephen Weinberg, in his book, The First Three Minutes, gave a good outline of the origins of the physical universe, whereas the first three chapters of Genesis give us an excellent explanation, their foundational explanation, as to a relational universe, how we relate to God, how we relate to one another and to our environment. Today's talk will be brief and focus on two Hebrew words that come in the creation text. Here they are, bara and asa. Now, the term bara crops up three times in chapter one and the word Asa is used at all other points in the creation account. So here are the Barra references. Chapter 1 and verse 1. In the beginning God created, Barra, God created the heavens and the earth. In chapter 1 and verse 21 we find that God created the animals of the land, sea and sky. And in chapter 1 verse 27 God created humankind in his own image, male and female he created them. Now the word bara is often said to speak of creation out of nothing. That's the Latin phrase, ex nihilo, out of nothing. Whereas asa speaks of forming or fashioning something out of materials that one already has. Now if this distinction is valid, then the three bara references absolutely require divine acts which have no parallel in human experience whereas the Asa references are more akin to our human creative acts, where we take already existing materials and we make new products or manufacture new goods or create works of art. Now, some who observe these differences use this distinction to claim that only God can create a universe out of nothing, animated life out of nothing, sentient human life out of nothing. Everything else can develop or evolve over time. Now, if this distinction is justified, one can legitimately lay hold of it and draw certain conclusions from this linguistic observation of the two Hebrew terms. That would be a tidy distinction, wouldn't it? If we could distinguish between Bara and Asa, it would certainly give weight to the young earth creationists who could latch onto this and use it to support their particular stance in respect to the Genesis text. You might have heard of Archbishop Usher, James Usher, that Irish bishop from the 17th century, who claimed that the earth was just over 6,000 years old and was created on the evening of the 6th of October. However, such an understanding of these two terms would rely upon the fact that they're used consistently and exclusively in such a way. But that's not so. Take, for instance, the creation of humankind in Genesis 1 and verse 27. Bara is used. And yet when the creation of humankind is expanded upon in Genesis chapter 2, the text states that the Lord God Asa formed, formed the man from the dust of the ground. Chapter 2 and verse 7. You see, these two terms at that point are being used interchangeably, as they are, in fact, throughout much of the Old Testament texts. Now, God can create ex nihilo. He has brought something out of nothing. But at what points he creates and at what points he fashions is far from clear. All of it is ultimately the product of God's creativity as originally brought into being. However, much of that creation has been spoiled and distorted since. It, like we, need recreation. And that too is necessarily an act of divine creativity. Now today I'm not going to give you something to ponder over or muse over or discuss. I need to give you something to do. Make something. Write a song, a poem. Tidy a room, paint a picture. Enjoy being creative.